prestigious, distinguished academic people. May God bless all of us today. On behalf of steering committee, my name is Farizam Kurniawan, Master of Science as a Master of Ceremony for this afternoon webinar. College of Vocational Studies, IPB University, Indonesia. Thank you very much as this event have been supported by Directorate of Partnership and Alignment of Business and Industry, Ministry of Education and Culture, Indonesia. Warm welcome to all of the participants from Indonesia and abroad. So many university and polytechnic as higher education into institution and company from Indonesia join today's webinar that I cannot mention one by one. And also we are delighted to have the student participant from Partnership University that also have collaboration with us. Guimara State College, Iloilo Science and Technology University, Mariano Marcos State University, Ni An Polytechnic, Van Hollerenstein University, Melbourne Polytechnic, Tarlac University. May I have your attention, please? Soon we are going to start the SVIPB Summer Coast Webinar. May all participants please be seated well with your own condition. We would like to also kindly request all of the participants to non activate the mobile phones or put them in a silent mode during the lecture. Your cooperative watch this at YouTube channel of SVIUNI. You may follow and subscribe the channel as you would be informed for the next webinar series from our college. Before start today's agenda, we will have the photo session. I will let the committee for taking the picture. Thank you. Let us start to take the picture. Uh, the first, uh, the first page. One, two, three. Okay. Always put a smile. You never know when you, when you are being photographed. One, two, three. Okay. Thank you so much. We will continue. We are honored to have uh, Mr. Arif Satria as our rector of IPB University and also our dean from College, College, College of Vocational Studies, IPB University uh, to be here. Um, and we are welcome. Uh, we are um, very happy to have Mr. Arif Darianto as our dean to have a welcoming speech. Mr. Arif Darianto, the floor is yours. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, good morning and uh, good afternoon. Selamat pagi dan selamat uh, siang, selamat sore karena perbedaan waktu. Selamat datang, welcome to the international webinar organized by College of Vocational Studies, IPP University, entitled Opportunities and Challenges in the IT Sector, Supporting Agro-Industry 4.0 in the COVID-19 Pandemic Era. This webinar is part of the third summer courses program hosted by SVIPP in this year. We appreciate all of you uh, taking time of your busy schedule to join us today. I would like to express my gratitude to Professor Dr. Arif Satria, Rector of IPB University, for opening this program. Professor Dr. Iskandar Siregar, Director of uh, International Collaboration Office, uh, IPB University, to support uh, the funding to conduct uh, this uh, webinar. Uh, Ketua Senat Sekolah, the Chairman of School Senat, Vice Dean, Head of the Study Program, College of Vocational IPP University, Mas Panji Wasmana, Chief Technical Officer at IPM Indonesia, and also Mas Rizal Fahreza, CEO Founder at TILU Indonesia for being speakers uh, from the industry sector in this uh, webinar. Our university partner from the Philippines, uh, Guamara State College, Mariano Marcos uh, State University, Tarlac, Agricultural University, ISAT uh, University, Leon Campus, uh, Iloilo Science and Technology University, Nian Polytechnic Singapore, Van Hall, Lerenstein Netherlands, and also Melbourne Polytechnic Institute, Chairman and Members of Organizing Committee and Student uh, Delegates of Summer Course Program around the world. The COVID-19 uh, pandemic that has hit uh, the country since several months ago 
has given birth to new lifestyle such as increasing awareness of health, healthy and nutritious food, ways of doing activities and long distance uh, communication through the use of information and communication technology. Information technology is developing very rapidly in the era of uh, pandemic uh, COVID-19 era. The use of technology and agriculture also yeah, can support increase uh, productivity and also competitiveness of the agricultural sectors. Information system have penetrated almost every area of life, including business and management. In the agro-industry sector, information system are not only a supporting tool, but can shift their role as a strategic tool. Uh, the use of information technology is based on the emergence of several fundamental problem in the aspect of agriculture productivity and competitiveness. Many technology have been developed in the agro uh, industry sector, starting from the manufacture of tool or machine, agro industrial processes, post harvest handling, uh, to agro industry management. The technology must be able uh, to support the realization of a roadmap for increasing agriculture productivity and competitiveness in Indonesia towards a strong self-sufficiency and also a strong uh, food and uh, nutrition security. Uh, the Indonesian government uh, re released the Making Indonesia 4.0 blueprint in April uh, 2018. The blueprint were clustered into four pillars, innovation, human resource, ICTs, and also financial infrastructure. In the blueprint is explained that the development is implemented in some transformative shifts, such as from traditional farming to smart farming, traditional SMEs, small medium enterprises to startups, traditional services to high value services, and many shifts needs to be developed to build priorities for innovation like smart city, medical hub, low carbon society and water management and technology. In this seminar, I think that we will learn from our rectors. Uh, that is really, really uh, good in uh, 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 what you call in the fit of uh, how to uh, explain what is the role of IPB in Agro Industry 4.0, what we call it is Agro Maritime 4.0 in IPB. And also we can also uh, learn from Pak Panji Wasmana and also but uh, Rizal Fareza from uh, their experience. I uh, sincerely uh, wish uh, from uh, this uh, seminar, uh, you will have productive days of interesting and stimulating discussion. Thank you very much uh, for Pak Rector attending this uh, webinar and I would like to invite you to uh, open uh, this program officially. Enjoy the program. Thank you for your attention. Wabillahi Taufiq Walidaya. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi Wabarakatuh. Uh, thank you, Mr. Arif Darianto, our dean. Uh, we also very pleased to have the rector of IPB University, Professor Arif Satria, to deliver the opening speech. Uh, Mr. Arif, uh, the time is yours. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Honorable. Uh, Dean College of Vocational Studies IPB University, Bapak Dr. Arif Darianto, Vice Dean College of Vocational Studies, Chairman of Senate, Prof. Iskandar, Director of International Collaboration Office, Pak Alim, Skan, Pak Alim Setiawan, Director of Student Affairs, and Speakers, Mr. Panji Wesmana from IBM, and Rizal Fahreza from FTLU Indonesia, University Partners from Guimara State College, Mariano Marcos State University, Tarlac Agricultural University, Isat U Leon Campus, Iloilo Science and Technology University, Nian Polytechnic, and Van Holler State in Netherlands, Organizing Committee, Student Delegate summer, summer, of Summer Course Program around the world. It is my great pleasure and honor to welcome you at the Summer Course on Smart Agro Industry 4.0 in the tropical countries, integrated with the international webinar with the topic opportunities and challenges in the IT sector supporting agro-industry 4.0 in the COVID-19 pandemic. Welcome to IBB University. I'm very happy due to this is the third summer course program organized by a College of Vocational Studies and IBB University 
which is designed for students around the world, not only to enrich academic profile and personal development, but also to improve their abilities in the global competition. And congratulations, uh, Sekolah Vokasi IPB, for the successful uh, summer course program. Ladies and gentlemen, as one of the oldest educational institutions in Indonesia, IBB is considered to have a long history of supporting the advancement of the of the agricultural sector in Indonesia. Agriculture sector in Indonesia plays an important role in economic development as well as agro-industry. In agro-industry, plays important and very strategic in increasing the added value of primary agricultural products. The industry 4.0 trend uh, because of the Industrial Revolution 4.0 is transforming the production capabilities of all industries, including the agricultural domain. And the connectivity is the cornerstone of this transformation. And IoT, a key enabling technology that is increasingly part of agricultural equipment. Agriculture 4.0, the coming agriculture revolution, must be must be a green one of uh, science and technology uh, at its heart. Agri Agriculture 4.0 will need to look at both the demand side and the value chain or supply side of the food scarcity equation using technology, not simple for the sake of, of, of innovation, but to improve and address the real needs to consumers and engineer the value chain. Future agriculture will use sophisticated technologies such as robots, temperature and moisture sensors, aerial image, and GPS technology to list a few. This advance will let business be more profitable, efficient, safer, and environmentally friendly. And digital and technological advancement are taking over the industry, enhancing the entire food value chain. Agricultural technology startup have grown more than 80% nowadays. Agri-tech startup are booming with entrepreneurs and investors showing a particular uh, appetite for the sector. These new technologies and solutions in the agriculture 4.0 can give hope to the food scarcity problem, such as productive, such as produce differently using new technologies use new technologies to bring food production to, to consumers, increasing efficiencies in the food chain, and incorporate uh, cross-industry technologies and applications. The Industry 4.0 trend is seen as a transforming force that will deeply impact the industry. The trend is building on an array of digital technologies, Internet of Things, Big Data, Artificial intelligence and of digital practice, cooperation, mobility, upper innovation. Therefore, the summer program at IB University is a good opportunity to gain a new perspective, which is which offers the best of both worlds: academic enrichment against a backdrop of new culture, language, and communities. Ladies and gentlemen, this year, Alhamdulillah, IB University has attained a grand achievement based on the university evaluation of higher education clustering done by the Indonesian Ministry of Education and Culture 2020. Every university placed first followed by other universities. Besides, every university also made impressive progress in the world university rankings. IBB has shown itself as the world-class university by improving its strong position in global rankings, has reached top 531 in the QS World University Ranking. This year's rank of IB University is an increase of around 100 spots from its prior position last year, around 600. And QS World University Ranking is one of the most important system of World University, including Indonesia. Ladies and gentlemen, by adjusting the lecture contents with current kind of technological industrial development, link and match between university and industrial world, we can bring an industrial atmosphere to the summer study program. Therefore, the summer study programs need to be done since it offers <coughs> opportunities to the participants to discover different subjects. Not only will this round of your resume, but it also offers personal enrichment. The development of the connectivity of agricultural tools is leading to 
important progress in agricultural practice. They enable the development of precision agriculture and increase the transparency of the industry. However, they also face significant challenges in the key necessity to enable data exchange in the business ecosystem and the need to invest in new infrastructure and tools. To my remarks, I wish all participants have a fruitful summer co program. I encourage you all to use this opportunity to establish common understanding of the issue at hand to initiate activities in line with the effective strategy for the implementation of higher vocational education. I would also like to extend my gratitude to the Dean of Vocational School, AB University, and the organizing committee for the hard work so that this event can run well. By saying Bismillahirrahmanirrahim, in the name of God, the most gracious, the most merciful, I officially the third summer course program on Smart Agro Industry 4.0 in tropical countries. Thank you for your kind attention. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Okay. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Mr. Arif Satria, for your wonderful speech. And now let me introduce our moderator, um, Mrs. Anissa Kartinawati, STPMT. Uh, she is a lecturer at uh, College of Vocational Studies, IPB University. Mrs. Anissa, uh, she graduated from Technology Industry Pertanian, Fakult Fakultas Teknologi Pertanian IPB on the year of 2006 and she also studied technology and management lingkungan from ITB University uh, Fakultas Teknik Sipil dan Lingkungan. He, she get graduated um, for her master degree and also on she also have experiences and in, in she also a lecturer in our uh, study program of management of industry for agro industry uh, and also industrial environmental management from IPB vocational school since 2012 until now Mrs Anissa Kartinawati the time is yours Good afternoon, everyone. First of all, I would like to welcome you to this webinar entitled Opportunities and Challenges in the IT Sector Supporting Agro-Industry 4.0 in the COVID-19 Pandemic. This webinar topic is strongly associated with the current challenges and problems uh, in Indonesia, especially in agro-industry and in the future agro-industry. Uh, during the pandemic and post-pandemic era, what we call the new life habits or new normal. Um, the role of technology in agro-industry, um, one of the alternative solution, I think, to this current situation and also the future. Uh, some uh, like uh, robotics, artificial intelligence, um, augmented reality, virtual reality, and, and the other things. Uh, uh, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to introduce today's webinar presenter who are experts and experience in, in informational information technology and also agro-industry. Our first presenter is Mr. Panji Wasmana. He is a Chief Technical Officer at IBM Indonesia. His educational uh, qualification as follows. Um, his educational qualification as follows, uh, Master of Computer Science um, in, from, from Bogor Agricultural University and a Bachelor in the same study, uh, the same subject in Bogor Agricultural University. And he is uh, now working at IBM Indonesia as a Chief Technical Officer. And he also achieved an Outstanding Technical Achievement Award at IBM 2014 and recognition for playing key role in IBM Indonesia uh, CAMSS initiative. And also, again, Outstanding Technical Achievement Award, IBM 2019. And next, our second presenter is Mr. Riza Vahreza. He is a co-founder Eptilu. Eptilu um, is uh, fresh from 
farm, uh, it's a citrus company and also agro agro edutourism and the center of training and education youth agri uh, agripreneur. Um, Mr. Rizal has award uh, as an Indonesian Young Agripreneurs Ambassador 2016 until 2018. And also he award as an outstanding startup youth uh, entrepreneurs in agriculture sectors. And uh, this year, uh, 2020 until 2022, uh, Mr. Rizal is also as uh, award as an Indonesia Millennial Agripreneur from Ministry of Agriculture, Republic of Indonesia. Okay, uh, each uh, presentation will be delivered in 20 minutes, and for all participants, you may send you may send in your question uh, at any time during the presentation by typing at chat menu. Include your name, question, and whom the question is directed. And we will collect the question and address them in the discussion session after uh, the, the end of the presentation. Uh, or participants uh, can ask directly to Mr. Panji or Mr. Riza. Okay, um, ladies and gentlemen, uh, I would like to welcome our first presenter. The presentation entitled Agriculture Transformation, IBM Point of View, References and Use Cases. Ladies, ladies and gentlemen, um, please welcome Mr. Panji Wasmana. Hello. Uh, Mr. Panji. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, how are you, sir? I'm good, good. Uh, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Uh, okay, yeah. please, the time is yours, Mr. Panji. Okay. Thank you so much. Uh, first of all, I would like to test. Uh, can you hear my voice and also can you see my presentation slide? Yes. Okay. Yes, clear from Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Okay, so we are ready now. Uh, okay, allow me to present on the uh, uh, IBM point of view on the agriculture transformation. This is such an honor for us to agri business is a complex value chain. I have several engagement with the different industry. Uh, talking about the uh, retail businesses and talking about with also food FMCG and also talking with the farmer itself because uh, around two years back ago we have two or three different engagement with the huge uh, plantation company in Indonesia where they starting up building the solution in terms of the uh, industry 4.0 implementation for the uh, plantation and then also we have a chance also to work with uh, several a uh, small initiative working with the farmer and then see the possibility that they can enhance uh, the use of technology for their production system, right? But uh, when we see the, the, the trend in terms of the global and worldwide model in the agriculture, the, at least there's a three different industry things, right? So again, when we're talking about the businesses, we always see about the compound annual growth. The largest compound annual growth is something that may be quite interesting to explore with, right? One is about the digital agronomy. So it's around the capital market in 2019, is talking about 9.2 billion US dollar, and then compound annual growth predicted is around 13%. It's talking about how we help the farmer, the agribusiness maker, to do the digitalization in terms of the collect, store, and analyze, and also share the electronic data or information along the agriculture value chains. This is related with the food security, food safety and also talking on the efficiency and residency. Second one is about the sustainability in the term of the food system. And the third one is talking about supply chain optimization. So this is three different industry themes where uh, we see and unfortunately that in the next future, this is something that need to be focused on. And it is something where the technology can help much more. So, <clears throat> When we're talking about the focus area, this is something that what we call as the key pillars where we as a technology company trying to develop a specific solution for our customer. The IBM vision is to drive the agribusiness revolution top down to deliver sustainable value along the food chain. So the control point here is talking about the sustainable so we have three different pillars where we put our focus area in the digital agronomy by providing integrated data and AI platform. We 
focusing on the yield improvement strategy, provide the smart input management system, and also provide the predictive insight capability. And the second pillar that we're trying to focus on is about the sustainable food system by providing provenance, providing the track and traceability capability in order to understand food processing happen and then how it comes all to the retail market. And then also talking about how we create the sustainable production by introducing the right amount of the methodology to calculate carbon. Just talking about focusing on the enterprise resource planning transformation because when we're talking about the huge production system, it should be supported by enterprise planning and also talking about the use of the smart manufacturing. These three pillars have three different foundation. One is a data and AI. So we're talking about establishing data management and also machine learning capability so we can understand what is the value from the data itself. And then the second one is talking about the connected system. So we're talking about the IoT in the brand of the names in IBM, we call it the Watson IoT. And then we're talking about the edge computing. This is the latest technology where we're trying to pull out and push out the data from the centralized system into the distributed system and then do the calculation in the agents uh, platform. And then the last one is talking about the infrastructure where we believe we're talking about the cloud technology, the hybrid cloud implementation, 5G system. It's just something that may be pushing out all the capabilities in the future. And the solution consists of a, a reference architecture as follows. So in the, in the bottom one, we have the consistent approach in the infrastructure point of view, where we promote the use of the multi-cloud or we call it the hybrid cloud, where there is a limitless resources to do the complex computation. And then also talking about the blockchain technology, also talking about the open sea for the container technology and also the, our system uh, platform. And then in the data layer, we're talking about the capability from our weather company data so we have separate company that providing the prediction model for the weather, including the forecast, historical, and also the seasonal data. And then we have pairs, the solution for the satellite geospatial data. This is something quite interesting that we will uh, so, so showing you the demo, of course. And then also talking about um, integrate with the sensor and the enterprise and the satellite data. And then uh, after that, we have the digital solution component, which is the comprise of the Watson Decision Platform Agriculture, this is basically provide the consistent platform that helping the farmer, providing the farmer adversary, yield improvement strategy, and also talking about the input optimization, leveraging the data and AI technology. And then also we have the crop forecast regional level system. And then we have the crop optimizer. We have IBM Food Trust to control the traceability on the food, food chain. And then also talking about the demand forecast related to the how we understand the consumer uh, behavior, or call it as a consumer insight. Mm -hmm. And then on, on top of it, we have this uh, predefined uh, agri models talking about the various model of the crop models, like the coffee, uh, cacao, uh, sugar, palm oil, and many more. And then at the end, all this uh, value proposition is uh, can be implemented in the food cycle of uh, uh, value chains. Right? And then if we see in the details, what is actually the Watson Decision Platform and then what we can learn from here is basically it's a very important for us to understand when we implement such a system in the large environment and a very, uh, many different variable environment, it's a very important for us to create the platform. Basically, the platform is something quite flexible for us to develop something with and then make us can innovate and also adapt with the specific environment and also specific challenge that we have. So for example, we have like the uh, uh, weather data that can be connected through the open API. So there is no vendor locking, everyone can connect, everyone can use the technology on top of it. And then uh, we can also develop uh, crop forecast by leveraging a different data set. We can create the, uh, again, because we're talking about the platform, you can deploy many different models and then for the example here, we can uh, uh, do the uh, data ingestion and then we can do the uh, prediction model. So we can understand about the total revenue uplift uh, by the uh, uh, farm model. We can understand about how many number of the consumption and then many things we can uh, predict in the future, right? Same here also talking about the crop optimizer. 
And then this is something, the same model, same platform that we can customize based on the specific crop, the specific area, specific point of interest. But basically, we're trying to help the farmer or the decision maker or the key stakeholder to understand what is the key trends, what is the uh, what is the behavior of the specific uh, agriculture product, and then how we can mitigate the risks because we understand what will happen in the future. So that's the kind of the solution we're trying to offer in the term of the data platform that we can access and also can share through the uh, different platform like the mobile application, web, and many different things. And then also we develop some people. This is something that uh, helping the uh, the farmer. And uh, uh, we develop the such an expert system to help farmer to ensure and understand about what is the key uh, activities need to be done in order to maximize their yield production. Right? Uh, I have this video. Uh, let's see uh, in this video. <coughs> Chemical analysis today is very complex and time consuming. The IBM Ecopad is paper based analysis for agriculture. This is a quite simple technology. Uh, basically, the idea is uh, we use the capillary force in the paper in order to understand and also detect five chemical parameter, which is uh, something that's very important for the farming process. And then also low production cost, of course, because this is only paper. And then this is doesn't contain electric component. So basically, it's only paper, right? And then this is the layout. Basically, you can print in any uh, different paper type, uh, but the key component here is something that uh, patent from IBM. But I, I believe this is something that can give you an idea about what uh, the some related to the metadata. It can be the potential uh, program, and it can be anything like the metadata for a specific area. And then uh, after the farmer put those uh, certain of the sample here, we uh, use the AI machine technology to do the detect region of interest. And then we take the specific uh, uh, circle here as a represent uh, about the sum of the uh, 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 RGB uh, projection color. And then uh, we uh, extract the color metric from this parameter. And then we do the calibration through the AI model or machine learning here. And then at the end, we will provide the, all these uh, five different uh, composition of the uh, chemical that is required uh, by farmer to understand. And actually, we the expert system that providing also uh, what kind of the what kind of uh, you know uh, uh, and the treatment need to be done in order to maximize the specific crop type. So this is quite helpful. This is not really something expensive. You can leverage the smartphone. You just need a paper, and then you just need to embed with the specific. Uh, uh, connection to our uh, services, right? And then uh, we use uh, some kind of the technology related to the cloud platform. We leverage the Python technology for data processing. We're using the unstructured data, for example, the big uh, for the data integration, also communication between the smartphone and the backend system. And then at the end, of course, uh, if you see from the bigger view, is actually you can take all the sample data across Indonesia, and then you can collect in very uh, in a very simple method to understand about the soil condition across an uh, island in Indonesia. Some that's something possible implementation in our country. And then uh, related with the food trust uh, uh, technology, we do the all the implementation here. This is already live implementation with Walmart. Uh, basically, we conduct uh, technology uh, uh, food traceability, track and trace capability over the blockchain technology. So this is quite a complex system, distributed system, but it will give a beneficiary to all stakeholders to understand about what is happened in their food and then when, where, and then also what kind of the food quality in this particular area, right? So uh, why this is very important, I believe uh, everyone, uh, 
remember about the case in the term of the Canon fees quality issue in 2018. Actually, there's only 27 brands impacted, uh, be, uh, tainted by worms. This is the BP form uh, release, uh, press release, right? But what happened because there's no control environment at that time, and I believe still <laughs> until today. Uh, so what happened in the market? There's uh, something massively happened uh, for all can fees outside of this 27 brand. It's already impacted. No one willing to pay for the can uh, fees for a long time. I believe it took around seven months or eight months until the market ready to accept uh, uh, the, the new production batch. And then they believe this is something that, uh, you know, safe enough for them to consume, right? So the idea that we're trying to do is actually, uh, we develop the technology, the combining all the farmer information, the uh, tracking system, the warehousing system, even to the retail subsystem, so they can track and press. And if there's a barcode in the mango here, we can scan this barcode and then automatically we can understand where's the, uh, this mango uh, farmed and then how long it already take by tracking system, where is the batch, where is the position of the warehouse, how long it take in the warehouse and then how fresh the condition uh, when this uh, uh, mangoes are consumed, right? So this is quite simple things. But believe us, this is a big, um, a big, big problem for many different countries when they're talking about the food quality assurance in terms of their traceability. So for the example here, this is the typical manual mixed digital paper-based methodology when we talk trying to do the trace and traceability for the specific uh, product, right? It took uh, six days, 18 hours and 26 minutes. But when they implement this, it's changed into 2.2 seconds per component product. So this is quite massive reduction in terms of the pro, uh, uh, you know, cust uh, customer experience and also in terms of the data processing concept. And then we can uh, leverage this model on not only for the track and traceability, but also we use this model to do the recall. So for we're talking about the recall process, this is something very important for the businesses you need to have right strategy to do the recall process. If not, you lose a lot of money there. So you can imagine that if we can provide the specific information based on the specific UPC patch in the term of the product, you can see uh, how many number of store, how many number of distribution, where is the warehouse. And then if there's kind of the uh, you know recall process, you can take on a specific batch and then it can save a lot in terms of the uh, production and also the uh, revenue and benefit from the your own product. And then of course we can combine with the certificate management. So you can imagine that every farmer will hold specific certificate for them in order to produce and also to meet specific requirement and the food quality measurement in a specific product. So using this technology, we can assure the certificate is a, a cleaning maintenance and also we, when we do the trash and recall, this is something that uh, can be, uh, you know, uh, 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 execute uh, very well without any waste in the environment and the production system. And then uh, related to the technology in the weather perspective, right? This is something that also quite interesting because when we're talking about the weather, the very beginning, this is something actually huge data and that it's impacting a lot in terms of the how agriculture business are done and also how the supply chain itself operate. When we have clarity in terms of the, what happened in the past, what happened in the current and also what, uh, what will happen in the future, this is something that can help you to make the right strategy and then also to make the right decision on how you operate in the future. And then what we do is actually we build the model what we call the global high resolution weather forecasting or graph system. And then this model is actually, we can create the accuracy up to three kilometer of our land globally. And then we have five minute time step versus hourly. So this is a huge massive uh, uh, computing process and also the model. So we can improve the accuracy on the weather prediction system, right? And then we embed this into the pair system. And then this pair system is actually uh, something that related with the uh, 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 a massive big data platform 
to collect all the Landsat image, to collect all the satellite image. So you can do the uh, query and then also the data processing over this uh, 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 platform. So you can imagine that you have the different Landsat uh, data. You have the temporal data related to the spatial information. It already created, it already standardized. So you can query based on the specific longitude and latitude. And also you can select a specific uh, a fragment of data and then you can leverage this data for the analysis and you make decision based on this uh, analysis itself. Start at finish. Okay. And then uh, if you need to enhance the specific information in terms of the special information, you can combine with the more uh, you know accurate in uh, data special. You can take it from the uh, 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 using the, uh, for example, uh, using the specific lidar information. You can using the drone or maybe using the any the vehicle to take aerial image, and then you can stitch the data and then combine with our satellite data. So you can get a high resolution of the information, and then you can leverage and get the most accurate information. Uh, to produce and also to uh, examine, right? And then uh, you also can combine the weather company data using the automatic weather station. You can uh, leverage the internet connectivity and then uh, connect with our uh, system. So you can uh, send your data locally and then it will improve the uh, accuracy in terms of the weather uh, data point. And then uh, you can leverage our platform uh, to uh, create the physical model of your crop, and then uh, create the statistical model, conduct the data assimilation, and then you can do the asking, uh, optimization. So you can understand what is the weather impact and then how and uh, how you can mitigate the risk in the future with this uh, particular information. And then this is something that we already done uh, around three years back ago. This is what we call the variable rate irrigation. So basically, this is the case when we do uh, uh, control, uh, micro control in the irrigation system in the fine yard system. So uh, you can imagine this fine yard is a very huge uh, acre uh, land of the production. We combine the technology with the IoT and the satellite. So we we see that uh, the condition of the NFI or the satellite imaging before the irrigation uh, 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 before the variable rate irrigation and then after the variable rate irrigation. You can see that the NDVI uh, index uh, value is now changes from the yellow orange part into the more green and then also the blue part. It means that the number of the water deposit is much more homogeneous, and then it will provide the best environment for the pine to grow. Right? And then what we do is actually we create a specific uh, model and then we create the grid uh, over the 15 uh, uh, meters and then uh, we create the 140 independent irrigation zone. And then we do the control using the sensor and then using the technology uh, through the mode uh, technology. And then we combine with the large area IR imaging. And then we trying to make the microcontroller when and also how much amount of the water need to be irrigated in the specific area. So at the end, uh, the result is uh, quite interesting. And then when we improve the NDVI index, if you can see in this, uh, in this uh, uh, presentation, uh, there's a kind of the uh, fine size improvement, right? In 2013 compared to 2012. And then uh, here, this is the, 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 the regression model where we see that there's uh, improvement in yield on, uh, per hour uh, compared with the NDVI value. So if you see that index is getting greener and blue, and then you get the bigger number of the NDVI, and then yield a ton per acre is a uh, very good uh, improvement there. So yield improvement more than 20% uh, with the 50% less water. So this is a quite interesting technology, and then you can combine uh, and also develop and many different varieties of the crops. Right? And then uh, something that's very important also that we already developed, and then something that we really want to share is how we build what we call the knowledge representation of the crop system or the agriculture ecosystem itself. So we built what we call as the uh, uh, enterprise uh, uh, data management system, where we trying to segregate and create the standard glossary reference data, taxonomy, and also the ontology model for the specific crop. 
the reason why we built this, we're trying to develop the huge and also the consistent model and the knowledge representation model. So if there's a query in terms of the specific crop, specific information about the crop, it can be served consistently and it can be interchanged between different uh, application. So for the example here, this is the presentation on the uh, ontology model where we can leverage the different AI uh, model uh, to uh, do the query to do the presentation for the electronic field record that we already present here. So this is all the technology that we already uh, developed until today. There's so much more uh, uh, interesting project that still happen right now. We're talking about how to build a, a, you know, a, a, a trusted industry process, how to uh, uh, reduce the carbon footprint in terms of the uh, agriculture processes. This is something that we are trying to do uh, uh, until today. And then the, this is the key takeaways from my presentation. So basically, uh, the global mega trend created a significant challenge for the agri industry. You can see that there's a lot of people need to be fed, and also there's a lot of uh, string uh, area in terms of the agriculture area, and also uh, not smart people now going to the, uh, want to have kind of the career as the farmer. So there's a quite real challenge that we have right now. And also I believe, uh, I, I can see in my generation also when I uh, graduated from uh, uh, Bogor University, actually, uh, none of my, uh, uh, you know, my uh, uh, network actually worked as a farmer. Most of them I met again, uh, they work at the bank they work at the manufacturing company, they work as an expert in many area, but not in the uh, agriculture area. So it's a real challenge that we have right now. And the second one is use of data and AI are the keys uh, to innovate in the agriculture. So this is very clear when we have understanding about the data and also we have the good quality in the data, then we can leverage AI technology to reveal the pattern to optimize and to predict uh, what will happen next right so this is very important to leverage and emphasize use of the data and ai the third one is understanding of the complex business network and reveal the highest value of the innovation is a must so many times i met with uh, many different uh, uh, scenario and also implementation in the agriculture area it's uh, sometimes it's actually not pointing out into the right point not not necessarily because the technology uh, barrier but Sometimes it's talking about the change management process, sometimes it's talking about the regulation. So it's very important for us to identify the right uh, pain point, the right uh, the, the innovation point, so we can give and uh, give you know the, the best benefit to our key stakeholder. And then the last but not least is about uh, technology is designed to empower people. So please do not forget this is talking about the people, process, and data. It's no more technology because. As, as we know today, the technology is something that can be commoditized. You can find out many different cloud technology. You can find out many different uh, big data technology implementation, AI technology implementation across uh, different vendors. So there's no technology problem anymore, but now we call it the people, process, and data. So when we're talking about the data, we already see that how we beneficial the data. And then also, it's a very important for us to improve this equally. So please ensure when you implement the technology, the change management is going to be in place. And then you can consider this as a part of the triangle, people, process, and data. And it to be enhanced uh, uh, accordingly in an equal way. Uh, that's my presentation. And uh, back to you, uh, to the moderator. <clears throat> Okay, thank you, Mr. Panji. It was uh, a very informative. It was very uh, interesting uh, presentation. Okay, um, we have already one question in the chat column. Um, question is um, regarding with the maybe uh, uh, I read the 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 question. It was. Uh, it's from team webinar as, uh, regarding with this yield production. IBM promote technology called IBM Agro Pet IoT prototype, and have different type of corp and uh, of corp and plant. Uh, 
This is the, we know that each corp has a different ability to absorb sunlight, water, and in Indonesia due to mega biodiversity have different type of topography as well. In yeah. your own perspective, are they the problem to develop the enterprise data? And what is the biggest challenge to development? <laughs> Okay, uh, thank you so much. This is a, a very good question. Uh, actually, I would like to share uh, my experience when we uh, do the uh, implementation rollout in Indonesia. Uh, the question and also the statement in the question itself is very clear. It is absolutely right. We have mega biodiversity. That's the key point here, right? So that's why in the, my key takeaways, I said that we need to choose the right point for innovation. Right. So that's not necessary for us to uh, collect all the information. So for example, in the agro path point of view, there's only limit into the five different chemists apart. We're not trying to collect different uh, 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 chemical ingredients because we believe in these five different uh, chemical representation, it can be uh, represent at least more than 60% of the total uh, differ, uh, 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 biodiversity. So that's the, 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 the key point here. We're trying to make it uh, not really generic, but we're trying to aim the right point for us to be collected. If you're trying to collect everything, there's something I, I believe there's not a good approach for, for, for doing that one, right? So uh, when I, I do the implementation in one of the plantation area, uh, this, they have the thousand uh, 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 um, uh, kilometer uh, thousand art, uh, area for the production, right? But uh, we believe that we start with a specific area, which is we segregate this area is only for the uh, nursing, and then one is for the production one. So we trying to focus into the nursing because this is the high value area, and then we do the uh, research in this particular area only, right? And then we do the uh, implementation, we do the research just for this area. And then we move into the specific area for the production, but it's also only for the specific part of the, uh, uh, the area where we believe this can be represent for all the area of the production on this our customer. So that's the key point here where we need to segregate between the, uh, the potential benefit and then the ideal condition. So, uh, the, the point here is uh, very important for us as a researcher and also for the uh, all the, the distinguished uh, participants in this uh, 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 webinar. Please choose your target. That's a key point here, right? That's a, uh, to answering your point, how to uh, uh, mitigate the, the key point related with the uh, mega biodiversity case, right? And then also about the uh, Building the uh, what is the name? Uh, mm, what's the name here? Sorry, develop the enterprise data, right? Yeah. So when we're talking about the develop the enterprise data, at this moment in time, we only have seven different crops, right? So every time we engage with the customer, we ask for their permission to collect the specific uh, ontology information related with this particular crops, and then we create this as a public domain in, uh, information. It means that. If there is another engagement and then there's a similar crops, they can enrich and can leverage the same data. So again, speak your battle, do your best in the part, improve your enterprise data, and then at the same time you grow based on the different engagement. But again, the key point here: make it as a platform, make it as a generic, make it as a consistent representation. So you can make it. Uh, uh, you know, uh, you can leverage the same infrastructure, the same data model in the different uh, engagement in your in the different customer. So the idea is to remain the same if you want to implement in the in Indonesia, uh, for example. Now you're working with the Ministry of Agriculture. Now maybe you need to data interchange with the Ministry of Industry. The enterprise data point of view is need to develop the consistent representation. So you can share the data consistently across different stakeholders. Right. That's, that's my answer. Uh, hopefully, we can answer all the question there. Okay, thank you, Mr. Panji. So, um, yeah, the researcher, researcher I, I believe that uh, in IBM have the, a lot of um, innovation, a lot of uh, developing in IT support in agriculture, yeah. Um, but we have to check the potential, the, the bigger 
yeah, uh, the bigger impact to to the agriculture. Uh, and uh, the second question, uh, how much does it cost for uh, industry to to create or to implement artificial intelligence about the satellite data? But the, uh, is it easy to get the data satellite? Maybe um, it connect with the triangle, people, process, and the data. Mm -hmm. Mr. Panji. Yeah, that's a very good question also, but it's a very uh, difficult to answer because uh, the, the size of the investment is really depend on the case, right? So if you were, if you're talking about the small pilot case, uh, sometimes people will spend around hundred k dollar or maybe uh, less than that only to try out the technology Same itself. Thing. So <laughs> the implementation it can be for free, but again with the cloud technology. Uh, many different customer now no, doesn't need to you know to invest upfront. They can leverage the AI technology. You, you can see the IBM Cloud, AWS Cloud, Google. You can make a different platform there, so you can farm up the data there, and then you can develop the different scenario in terms of the uh, technology implementation. And then if there's no uh, such a good traction in the result, so you can uh, decommission again all the resources, and you can stop to pay. Right. So again, the cloud technology gives you a new window, new perspective, new opportunity to conduct the uh, innovation and also to implement your idea. So in terms of the how much, it's again, it's a very depend on the complexity of the implementation. <clears throat> okay. Um, very well. Uh, thank you, Mr. Panji. And still, um, a lot, uh, three questions, uh, four questions. It's uh, from Ms. Tonya. Um, about uh, blockchain, Correct. about blockchain technology already applied to agriculture. Um, it's not the tool that's the problem, but it's the people. What do you think? Yes, that's a valid <laughs> statement from Estonia. That's a very valid statement. So I, I already implement two different blockchains uh, in Indonesia. One is for the Threatland solution and others is something that I cannot disclose because of the NDA. But when we're talking about the blockchain technologies, basically talking about the distributed uh, ledger, where we're trying to combine uh, different stakeholders with the different interests, and then we can share the same structure of data among all the stakeholders. So when we're talking about the sharing of information, there is a, a, a very uh, primary requirement need to be established, right? So we need to ensure every participant, every a stakeholder in this network share the similar interests and everyone on each of them will take the benefit from this uh, collaboration. If there's only one or only two get the benefit or while the rest of the ecosystem only feeding the data, believe me, it's never happened. It will not really uh, going to uh, live production system. I already have that kind of the failed project. There's a valid statement. It's about the people. It's not necessarily the people. It's all get talking about the political wise and also talking about the change management perspective. So for one example, right? I have one use cases where one of the stakeholders is actually the key stakeholder for this infrastructure in the blockchains. It's a bit reluctant or hesitate to, to share the data. Because he feel that when he's opened the data, it's actually he's revealed some of the businesses that they have, and that, that will be impacting and jeopardy their current businesses. So that's stop. That's become the hard stopper for this project. And then we learn from this uh, field that actually it's very important to map the requirement for each participant, ensure that everyone will get the benefit from this all collaboration. And then finally, we implement the blockchains on top of these uh, use cases. But again, please ensure everyone happy, everyone will get benefit from the implementation. That's the key. And then you're totally right. It's not just about the technology, but it's also about the people and also the process behind on the business itself. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, this we have uh, the remaining. Uh, five minutes yeah, to, for this uh, ses discussion session, but it's still a question, Mr. Panji, from Alin Capio. Uh, it's from is ISAT uh, University, U University Leon Campus. Uh, about scanning of code, can 
can still be detected even faded due to handling the parcel. Oh yeah, it's, it's about uh. And the code can still. Code can, scanning. Oh yeah, if I'm not mistaken to understand your 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 question here, uh, are you referring into the uh, package or the parcel? Uh, due to the uh, deterioration of the parcel itself, right? For example, the label faded or something like that, right? So you're right. This is the key point. Uh, it's really depend on the model you're trying to collect through the IoT. In our case with Walmart, we conducted the first pilot through the uh, isolated environment. So uh, as you know, in the US company and the US environment, uh, they have very high standard in terms of the packaging process and also the delivery process, right? So we have the setup of the barcode system, and also some, uh, and also in the some specific large uh, uh, parcel, we leverage the active RFID. So this, uh, there is no issue in the faded and uh, uh, you know packaging parcel, but uh, it's really it depend on the situation. But using the barcode and also the uh, uh, some specific uh, condition and our treatment in the in the environment, it helped us to control uh, during our pilot. But you're right, there's a potential problem when we have a condition, a deteriorating condition, the parcel. So for example, barcode is a bit uh, faded or maybe the serial number cannot be seen. So again, the interaction and also help from the people and the, from the operator is something that might be necessary. But again, uh, learn from my experience, if you're trying to refactor every possible condition, it's very difficult for you for, to innovate. Sometimes you need to take a leap, you need to take a fight that actually, if you're trying to do this one, trying to make assumption, at least you can take around 80% of the normal or the healthy flow. The rest 20% is something the anomaly, something must be uh, missing from your calculation. It can be improved along the time. But again, the idea that I would like to share with you all, just trying to do uh, uh, the, 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 you know, the, 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 uh, the, you know, the encapsulation of the problem itself, trying to do uh, correct the assumption, trying to do, make it a control environment, and then trying to innovate in this particular environment and then improve by the time to mitigate some of the, uh, uh, you know, uh, 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 some of the anomaly happen in the, in the implementation. That's my answer. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Um, maybe uh, one last question because uh, we have uh, running out of time for this first discussion. Uh, this is from Satria Dwi Cahyo. Uh, so much farm in Indonesia, and some of them are in the remote area where technology is difficult to access. So how to reach and convince farmer, convince farmer who are in remote using IBM? Right. Uh, that's, that's also the key challenge that we have right now. I think in the early, in early uh, moment when we start this uh, event also, there's a problem with the connectivity, right? One of the uh, moderator cannot connect with this uh, webinar. That's the real fact, right? Even this happened in our, uh, uh, you know, central province or maybe like the huge cities like the Bogor or maybe like the Jakarta. Uh, but it's always happened about the connectivity issue, about the coverage in terms of the uh, technology. But learn from um, uh, our engagement with uh, one of the uh, 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 plantation company, which is they work in the remote area. There's always the way for us to conduct what we call the off offline data collection process. So for the example, if you go into the remote area, there's a time for you also to come up to the city or the, to the rural area, right? There's maybe some of the, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, transmission uh, uh, in, in, in phone, you get the connect and you get, you will be able to connect with the uh, internet, you're able to send the data. So what we're trying to do at the time is actually uh, conducting what we call the offline and online data synchronization. So for the, some of the part if, which is not covered uh, by the telco company, we do the uh, uh, offline data collection we leverage the smartphone, we collect the data, and once they reach the branch office, they do the data synchronization process, right? So that, that's something we can do also. Related to your question, how to convince the farmer to leverage this technology? It's a very simple. And this is something that we, I learned uh, uh, personally when we talk with the different, uh, not the farmer, different customer or different uh, businesses. If you can give the benefit to them, there is no way for them to say no. 
So it's a very important for you when you do the innovation, you understand your persona, which is the farmer itself. Understand their pain point, understand how you can help them directly without hesitation. So if you say that the farmer needs information about, uh, for example, about the soil quality, that's the pain point. At this moment in time, they need to collect the soil, take it to the lab, need to pay a certain amount of money, and then they wait until next two or three weeks to get the result. Now, the pain point is very clear. How to make it simple for them while keep uh, maintaining the quality of the information, right? So for example, you can leave as agropath, it's only take it, uh, uh, you know, take the, the, the soil sample, just put the water on top of it and then put in the paper and then take the picture uh, into the, uh, you know, uh, using the smartphone. Or even if they doesn't have the smartphone, they can go into the uh, specific area where maybe some of the units or some of the uh, part of the Ministry of Agriculture office there. And then they can give the paper, they take the picture and then they connect to the internet within the sec uh, seconds, they will get the result, right? So there's a very clear statement where you're trying to cut the total hours required to get the soil uh, analysis result within the, uh, uh, you know, uh, maybe more than three days into the split of seconds. So that's a statement. And then that's the benefit reflected from your solution. And then you can convince the farmer to use your product. The biggest problem happened right now for the most of the programs that happen uh, conducting by the government, they trying to collect information from the farmer, right? So the point here is only collecting the information without giving something more to them. So that's why many different initiatives stop because they didn't capture the right persona, the right pain point from the persona itself. So it's a very important for us. There's a listener from us, understand your customer, understand their persona, make the right statement, how we can help them and how we can leverage the technology for them. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, uh, very well. Uh, thank you, Mr. Panji. Um, I think it's um, uh, another question is uh, related to the blockchain and the various uh, characters in Indonesia. Maybe you have uh, mentioned it before because of limitation of the time for discussion, sir. Uh, but before we go to another uh, to the next agenda, I want to welcome to uh, Professor Iskandar uh, Zulkarnain Siregar, the director of ICO IPB International Collaboration um, Organization. Uh, maybe, um, uh, sir, maybe you, you have some something to Pak Iskandar. Okay, maybe. Okay, uh, thank you, Mr. Panji, for the inspiring, for the huge uh, information that uh, IBM has uh, uh, has uh, uh, done, uh, and another for another future uh, technology, high technology, and all the um, innovation and um, development to support in the uh, to support agri industry. Thank you. Thank you again. Thank you, uh, uh, Mr. Thank you very much. Happy to share again to my alma mater. And, and please feel free to contact me if there's another inquiry and also a question regarding the technology implementation in agriculture. Again, thank you so much for your time. And also thank you for this uh, uh, opportunity for us to share about our point of view. Thank you so much. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. OK. Um, uh, the next uh, agenda is presentation from uh, second uh, from the presenter for from Mr. Rizal Fahreza. Mr. Rizal Fahreza, uh, maybe uh, it it is the presentation from the agriculture and uh, this is um, the agriculture. The uh, Mr. Panji said that uh, a lot of. Uh, uh, much uh, from IPB uh, work in the bank, work in the manufacture, and uh, less work in the agri agriculture. Agriculture. Uh, uh, maybe Mr. Rizal Fahriza, it is for co-founder Eptilu Agro Edu Tourism Indonesia, young enter young agripreneur ambassador. Mr. Rizal. Yes. Oh yeah. Uh, please. Uh, the time is yours. 
Okay, uh, I'm sorry. Thank uh, you. you can see my screen, my slide presentation. Yes, clearly. Okay, thank you. Uh, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, Honorable uh, Rector IPB Hello. University, Directors International Collaboration Office, the Dean of College of Vocational Studies, all committee short course program, uh, summer course programs, and all participants, and also Mr. Panji. Today, I would like sharing uh, my experience after uh, more than six years graduate from IPB University. Uh, from uh, Department of Agronomy and Horticulture, Faculty of Agriculture, Bogor Agriculture University. So uh, I am trying to focus uh, talking for agriculture, uh, farmer regeneration, rural development, and also community development. Uh, as you see, the 55, almost 60 percent, the poor people in Indonesia live in rural area after graduate from Bogor Agriculture University. Of course, this is uh, my responsible to go back to my village, to my rural area for uh, contribute for uh, developing uh, area in agriculture. And if we see another situation, look at, uh, uh, I I study from Boston Consulting Group that uh, predict Indonesia in 2030 uh, becoming the uh, seven largest economy in, in the world in terms of GDP. Uh, by three uh, indicator. The first is uh, surplus productive people population. I know the uh, the all student in vocational student, uh, the all uh, productive people, and then second, uh, sixty percent middle income, and the third is very important to uh, uh, transform from natural resources economy to become human capital based economy. And then in another situations, I see the data that almost 60% the farmer more than 45 years old. That's I the that's I the very uh, challenges challenges for us to contribute in agriculture uh, and doing in farmer regenerations. And I focus in uh, fruit in Indonesia, especially in citrus. Why? Because I see the market opportunity. Uh, I try to share. I try to share. This is the simple information. The opportunity market in Indonesia, especially in citrus, in based on uh, Ministry of Agriculture's uh, almost four trillion uh, rupiah. That is the big uh, for us. Uh, that is uh, opportunity in agriculture sector, especially in fruit and citrus in Indonesia. Mostly they are coming from uh, local farmer and also coming from import in another uh, countries. I will share uh, another information about uh, data of citrus. Uh, this is the Indonesia is uh, rich in local citrus variety, uh, such as in Mandarin, Tangerine, Pumelo, and other group. And, and uh, mostly uh, in citrus growing in farmer Indonesia, almost 70,000 hectares and production annually estimate to around 1.5 a billion a million tons and harvesting season uh, fall during in the period January until, until April in 20 percent and the peak season uh, usually in May until August almost 60 percent and then the last uh, harvesting in September until December uh, uh, average 45 percent is national production uh, in Indonesia mostly citrus uh, import from China uh, Pakistan Thailand and the uh, US. Uh, let me see. The, this is the the pack and the, the reality. Almost 60 percent the uh, Indonesian citrus farmers is all this. Only me. Look at that. Only me. Uh, still young. So <laughs> mostly the the farmers in Indonesia is uh, all this. In specialist in citrus. In another sector like uh, vegetables, like uh, greenhouse management. Now still a lot. Uh, still uh, now a uh, lot of uh, young entrepreneur, but for citrus uh, farmer or citrus plantation, still rare, and uh, that is challenges for us. Uh, uh, and then there's, there is the reason. So I try to, to become the farmer regeneration in citrus uh, community. This is based on the reason in 2014, I was uh, doing start startup agriculture in citrus companies, something like that. Uh, this is uh, I have to share a video 
my activity in daily activity in the farm like this you can hear audio No, no audio here. Um, Is it on? Doesn't matter. I, I, I still can use. Excuse me, Mr. Rizal, when you we develop the three principle yeah. in develop. The first is uh, excellent best practice. You know, I, I learned basically agriculture in Bogor Agriculture University. So I try to uh, attract in uh, the second is very important in empowering. Empowering to support and promote and agriculture is attractive sector for your generations. The third is very important for us is collaboration. Collaboration and strategic alliance with uh, governments, uh, university, society, media, and others. This is my activity, uh, daily activity. Uh, six years ago, still skinny and Okay, uh, this is uh, my story, my startup company, 2014. I starting initiation from vegetables and uh, 2016 uh, continues in planting fruit and trading and 2018, I developed agrotourism. Uh, I will explain why uh, we different uh, business in agrotourism. Like this, this is 2014. Uh, land preparation, planting chilies and tomatoes potatoes, grading, uh, harvesting in chilies, tomatoes, something like consent quality product for tomatoes, uh, fundamental productions, orange from nursery maintenance, harvest and for harvest management. This is my activity every day in the farm and arrive in the farm. So uh, 2016, I try to deliver product from Garut to Pangkal Pinang Island. So, uh, Garut from Jakarta, seven hours, and uh, from Jakarta to Pangkal Pinang by sea in the ITBC, uh, Tanjung Priuk, port of Tanjung Priuk, uh, by sea, around 20, 22 hours uh, by sea. So, this is, I, I'm running from 2016 until now. Uh, uh, every week, I send around uh, five until six ton. Uh, uh, vegetables and fruit to Pangkal Pinang. Like this, uh, marketing, uh, application, uh, uh, packaging, you know, uh, farmers uh, still traditional. So we try to innovative packaging. Uh, usually farmer use a plastic bag. We use to carton box like this. So more uh, resilient and more uh, companion for customer, something like that. And then uh, in 2007, 17, I uh, uh, opened the agro tourism. Why? We choose to differentiate business model to agro tourism because I see the opportunity. Look at that by the data, the trend visitor people to West Java, especially to Garut, almost 2 uh, million people. The data is 2015. Now I think uh, almost 3 million people the people uh, coming to Garut every week, uh, and annually, every week, uh, the people uh, for vacation, for laser coming to Bandung or to Garut, that's our, that's our uh, I try to attract and get the opportunity for doing in uh, uh, the agro-tourism sector. Something like that, uh, here's in my uh, agro-tourism, this is the parking area, and then people coming to my farm, uh, harvesting, something like that. And then uh, in the weekend area, uh, focus on 
for family. Integrating farming with organic veggie, rice, tomatoes, pumpkin. And then uh, I try to open the local signature test with a restaurant, a traditional restaurant, Nasi Liwat, because that is uh, one of the famous uh, food for Sundanese. So I try to uh, make a, a restaurant, uh, Nasi Liwat, in the, inside the uh, orange plantation. Something like that. I I uh, I choose and I use the best quality of rice in Indonesia. As you know, is Garut is the one of the famous uh, the center of produce production rice in Indonesia, especially in West Java. Something like that. Uh, we use the local material in, uh, for uh, make building like gazebo, like uh, musola, something like that. Marketing strategy, we use to social media, Instagram, especially. Uh, you can see in ftlu.id, my, my, my Instagram uh, official. Uh, another activity, meeting, birthday, gathering. I try to support international or national event like International Martial Art in Indonesia 2019, the one of host uh, in Indonesia, in Eptilu, to become the uh, host in international martial art with uh, actor from movie The Red. Uh, try to make uh, the action movie in my plantation, something like that. I'm sorry, uh, the audio is not. Uh, That is the one of the strategic marketing because uh, the people coming a uh, lot of a director, producer, international producer from Hollywood, uh, especially in interest in martial art coming to Garut, coming to Indonesia. That is one of the promote for me, for Garut, for tourism in Garut uh, to another uh, people and another actors. This is the trend uh, people uh, coming to Eptilu. Uh, I, I know because from a uh, small uh, micro enterprise, data is very important. Data visitor is very important for leveraging uh, my uh, business to develop and to continue uh, our business. Uh, almost uh, 25,000 people uh, coming to my farm. This is a uh, youth team. Uh, Almost 80 people, eight, sorry, 80 percent staff and team in my uh, farm uh, from youth generation, average 25 years old. So this is my team. And then uh, after I continue uh, study in IPB and I am go, go back to my village to become farmer. I I doing a uh, research and benchmarking uh, in international short course uh, and. Uh, internship program in IPB University with Ohio State University and I get placement in Ohio State and get placement in California. I learn about production aspect in University of California Riverside and I'm doing a, a group with American Heart, Citrus and Apocado World Congress and from for service management in Berkeley University. Uh, Join meeting citrus variety commission, focusing uh, doing research, uh, collaborations, uh, trade show about citrus around the world. Uh, for logistic, I learned in Davis University, California of Davis. And for marketing, I do, doing a summer course in Palo Alto in Stanford. Uh, every week. I am joining uh, another event in US, like American Heart, uh, Spring Trier in Agriculture, and etc. This is my advisors. Look at that. This is the, the, the citrus, the best citrus, Mandarin or Tangerine in California. That is uh, my benchmarking. Hopefully, I can develop in Indonesia. Uh, I study, learn, learn more in uh, post harvest management, especially is in polar packing citrus, like this. This is the huge technologies uh, for 
data analysis and service management. Yeah, that is uh, uh, my inspiration after uh, I learned the biggest industry in US I was learning, the biggest farmers and plantation in US I was learning. So after I uh, go back to Indonesia, hopefully we can deliver and we can to encourage the uh, farmer in Indonesia to contribute and collaborate together. This is the uh, my purpose to agriculture, farmer regeneration, rural development and community development. This is uh, the local media, uh, regional media, menciptakan pengusaha pertanian milenial di Garut to, to encourage the millennial farmer in Garut district. And then uh, I collaborate with, uh, sorry, uh, collaborate with uh, Cooperation Citrus Plantation in six di district, uh, 45 young farmers, uh, right around 75 hectares uh, citrus and vegetables. This is for five years from 2020 until 2025. Uh, I used to model of youth agro entrepreneurships, uh, one percent one percent trend, one product for citrus plantation based on agri, agri agro industry and agro tourism for support halal tourism in West Java. I open agriculture learning center like short course for student for uh, a senior high school like this. The explain how to planting from citrus liner production until plantation until harvest and service management. This is uh, social activities. I teach, I learn and in the school, in the prison, in the community youth. In national level, I'm joined to Indonesia Young Farmer Ambassadors and in national level to uh, based on uh, Minister of Agriculture, I'm become to uh, Millennial Farmer Ambassadors. And Last year, I'll, I'll discuss with uh, my president. My president, you are talking about productions, export, import. Please, uh, aware for farmer regeneration for rural development because that is key point, uh, such as uh, like Mr. Uh, uh, Mr. Panji said before, uh, technology without uh, human yeah, is uh, very important. Like this. This is the my model for youth agro entrepreneurship for sustainable citrus plantation. This model for capacity for 100 hectare in doing with uh, 100, 100 youth farmers. The first business line for citrus plantations, and then a uh, uh, single uh, second business line for multiple cropping with gingers, turmeric, and vegetables. So my product is fresh fruit uh, and location is West Java, Indonesia. This is uh, my, my model. Of course, we attract with youth uh, community. Uh, this is the, uh, I, I, I talking about local, regional, in international, I try to collaborate with uh, ASEAN region, in Asian region with three agenda. The first is peaceful and then second is cultural development and the third about economic improvement. For economic improvement, I focus from agriculture and agriculture, I more deeply talking about farmer regeneration. Something like that. Uh, the last year, uh, short course in Beijing, in China, uh, about youth leadership program. At the same time, we talking about agriculture and rural development. In FAO program, we join to program innovative agribusiness for young young entrepreneurs, something like that. And actually, in 2017, I get already uh, social entrepreneurs. That's all for me. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you. <clears throat> thank you very much, Mr. Rizal. Uh, it was very uh, fresh and uh, motivating also uh, your presentation. Uh, the first question from Ahmad Arif uh, Amin. Uh, he, he asked about uh, where is the location of uh, Orange take place in Garut? Maybe the exact location of Aptilu Farm. Okay. Uh, the the exactly location uh, in Jalan 
Raya Cikajang, kilometer 24, Kabupaten Garut. Maybe you can search in the search engine uh, in the Google Eptilu. I think in the top up there are coming Eptilu. You can search and find the Google Map. Okay. Uh, so uh, locate in location is in Cikajang. Maybe um, two hours from Garut. Central city. Uh, only, 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 only 55 minutes. Only 55, only 55 minutes. Minute because only uh, exactly kilometer 24. Jadi, uh, so kilometer 24 from Garut Center. So okay. City of Garut. Okay, it is uh, motivating. Maybe he wants, uh, maybe uh, for me, myself, it's what uh, interesting. Want to visit the orange farm in Garut. And, and not, not only orange, yeah. Not only orange and not other orange. Another fruits. Uh, okay, uh, another question. Uh, the second question is from Aji Rafael Alristo. Uh, the question about, um, okay, during your journey as a co-founder of Eptilu, what is the biggest challenge you face, especially when you combine the agricultural and technology? And how do you see Eptilu in the next 10 years? Okay, thank you, Aji, for the question. Maybe. Uh, please, Mr. Riza. Okay, uh, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Aji. This is the uh, very challenging question. <laughs> so the, the the big challenge, I think, to encourage team, to encourage team to struggle uh, doing in startup agricultures. You know, uh, I starting from plantation and then continued trading and uh, marketing, and then uh, 2017 and try to shifting to not not shifting but uh, to uh, uh, leverage to uh, agro -editorism. of course human resources is the biggest challenge how to motivate how to become the same uh, the same fre frequency same the pc to to build agricultures and then if you ask to uh, how your vision to 10 years later of course like i like like i say before in the biggest industry citrus I was learned in America, the biggest uh, the, the biggest uh, plantation citrus, the, the center of research, uh, university collaboration, focusing in research center of citrus, I was learned. So uh, of course I have to big uh, uh, vision, I have a big dream for to uh, attract, for to, to become to reality, what I have to become to uh, my vision. Uh, uh, the very important to I try to collaborate. I try to collaborate and not only for me, not only for uh, circle, but also for another partner. Like uh, before, Mr. Panji uh, talking about uh, Walmart Mango in Food Trust Project. Hopefully, after I presentations, uh, Mr. Panji can hear and can collaborate, focusing in Eptilu Citrus <laughs> to attract uh, and uh, to. Uh, trial and example for food trust project with IBM focusing in citrus <laughs> like like that. Excellent, Pak. It's something possible. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Pak Panji. Thank you. Yeah. Um, another question from uh, the third question from Annie. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry. The the third question is from uh, Putri. Dear Mr. Rizal, thank, uh, thank you for your excellent presentation. Putri from SV. How do you start your first venture and how much you put into it and what kind of trouble maybe uh, trouble or problems you had in the first place? Again, about challenges when you, when you start your first venture. Okay. Uh, I think... Uh, I am doing this business very collaborate with uh, my educational background in IPB University. Maybe uh, some of uh, you, uh, some of them, or you are uh, well known about festival bunga dan buah nusantara. Yes. Uh, this is the one of the biggest event in IPB University, and uh, me uh, as a founder and a co. Uh, founders and the, the, the event festival bunga and buah nusantara fruit and vegetable festival a uh, fruit and flower festival so that is to become motivation uh, i try to 
uh, I try to open the biggest event in Indonesia, but I still like, oh, I need more uh, practical. I need more, uh, 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 the, the more uh, effective. So I try to, after graduate from Bogor Agriculture University, and I'm doing uh, the business in Citrus. Uh, the first challenge, like uh, uh, me uh, before, that is human resources and also to 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 confident level confident level to attract to my team in the local area that is you know not easy six years until now so that is still challenges for us but uh, for pc i still uh, confident and i i am i have to come optimist to continue and uh, i'm promise uh, to uh, effort and to become more better and more bigger from now. Okay, that's uh, the answer for uh, uh, Putri's question. Um, uh, Mr. Rizal, uh, Mr. Rizal, another uh, question. Uh, is this, this the question from Diana? What is the most profitable farming business for you? And and maybe you can uh, answer also from question from Dimas. Um, you still have a chance to be an agro entrepreneur below twenty five years old because uh, and how to learn to be that who didn't have any experience in agriculture. Uh, maybe two questions for Mr. Rizal. Okay, uh, the first question, the most profitable. I think the first in the. Uh, the first is uh, trading and uh, mark trading. Trading is the the, the, the most uh, profitable, and the second I uh, I I get from uh, agrotourism because not only selling citrus but also we we selling about uh, signatures uh, culinary something like that. So that is the uh, the good uh, income for help uh, operational costs in my business. So the first is trading, and then and um, and then second from uh, agrotourism also and uh, second question i am forgot so. uh, second uh, second question is uh, is still chance is still have a chance to be an agro entrepreneur below 25 years old and how to learn to be that who didn't have any experience in agriculture yes i think <laughs> the opportunity still wide you know uh, especially for me in Garut, I am talking specific in Garut. Me, uh, Eptilu is the pioneer to open agricultures uh, to attract with agrotourism with culinary. Uh, Eptilu as a pioneer, but still, and not still another uh, potential uh, if open to agrotourism. And then, like I said before, there are three K, three K. Clue or strategic for startup uh, to starting agriculture. The first, uh, excellent best practice. You know, uh, you get uh, uh, educational, good educational from IPB University, uh, good uh, basic uh, educational background. So that is the key opportunity for you. And then second, empowering. We need to empowering not only for me, but also we need empowering your people. And then second, very important. Collaboration, collaboration pentahelic with government, with uh, university, with uh, social community, with media and others. So uh, excellent best practice, uh, empowering youth people and collaboration like that. Okay, complete and uh, complete answer from Mr. Rizal, and it's still uh, more questions from the participant because uh, okay, uh, the the next question the next question is from uh, Ani and then from Isat University Leon Campus. The question is regarding your citrus commodities. How did you develop priorities in policy alternative? Uh, specific in area expansion and disease prevention to improve your citrus production. Um, okay. okay. Yeah. That, uh, okay. That, that, that's all the question. 
Okay, uh, regarding the priority now, after I learn more deeply from production, from uh, uh, marketing, and from tourism, now uh, by vision and collaborate with a local farmer, I focus agro-industry because uh, there are two main business. The first is uh, plantation sectors, and then second, uh, for surplus management for food industry. We, we try to differentiate a product, not only uh, I am selling by fresh citrus, but also with uh, the, the, the food, uh, food uh, from uh, citrus, like uh, processing, like uh, syrup, like uh, uh, lemon waters, like citrus uh, and uh, something like that. So uh, uh, like I, I, I saw before, uh, 70 months ago, 2018, I I learned in uh, Thailand, I learned in uh, uh, Taiwan, a lot of uh, foreign product, differentiate product, not only uh, selling fresh, but also that there are uh, processing food from citrus. So target from now to leveraging with collaborate with youth uh, and local champion citrus in guard area for production aspect and food pro uh, processing. Because the, the biggest challenge in uh, uh, the citrus, like a big harvest, a lot of uh, the, the price is low. So the solution is food processing. Okay. Uh, the solution is food processing, like uh, you mentioned before, uh, orange juice, maybe. Yeah. Um, right. Something puree, like that. Okay. And also collaborate with Mr. Panji. Collaborate with Mr. Panji. Um, uh, the question about uh, agro-tourism, it is from Zulfikar Muhammad Abdul Razak uh, about agro-tourism, how to make it work again in this pandemic time? Okay, uh, the, uh, the, 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 uh, the biggest uh, question, the, the good question, the pandemic uh, era, of course, we, we have to follow the government uh, regulation. So in the March, up the, the, in the March until June, we uh, we stop uh, for agrotourism. Mm. We we stop uh, uh, agrotourism because we follow the rule government uh, officials. But uh, if we see another opportunity, the the demand of the citrus mm -hmm. uh, increasing twenty percent. Twenty percent the demand for citrus increasing. Not only Garut, not only Indonesia, but in the the global data. I, I get the data from Nelson, and 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 I I am very agree with this uh, situation because in local area, the demand uh, citrus in in the higher and the increasing like you know for immune buster for uh, vitamin C something like that. So the the for especially maybe for another farmer is the bad condition, but for a citrus a farmer it's the good condition in pandemic era. So that is the there there are a positive and there are negative but I try to doing the positive era uh, I try to contribute to become a distribution a lemon water to uh, almost uh, ten thousand per week in the uh, hospital in Garut area to center uh, but absolutely uh, not uh, producing directly but also collaborate with a uh, local. Uh, enterprise to distribute because at the uh, we have a brand we have to uh, marketing we have to uh, uh, networking so we encourage local uh, small medium with this condition there are positive there are negative but the po i try to positive to continue uh, to attract with uh, demand for citrus and until now we predict until now the demand of citrus still higher hmm. Okay, so three months from March until June, uh, maybe stop. close the close the farm for agro tourism, but another demand from citrus, yeah, twenty eight percent, it uh, increased twenty eight percent, yeah. Right. Um, okay, maybe uh, one more question. Uh, it is from uh, Triska. 
uh, question about fruit quality and vegetable quality. How to maintain the quality of fruit and vegetables in order to always get the best quality from seller to customer? Thank you, Mr. Riza. Okay. Uh, yes, I think this is the process. The first process, the very important how to my team, especially in my QC, to uh, discipline to uh, to attract with the standard. So the 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 solution we choose a different market different market from a traditional market we make like this condition and another for modern market we make like uh, another quality so we calculate and we separate market for for what for for doing uh, my product uh, every quality to grab and to deliver to customers so that is the the solution so uh, if if you're talking about the quality product, of course, we're still talking, we're still learning, we're still uh, uh, maintenance, how to make a track to uh, best quality for customer. But for now, we uh, doing separate product to traditional market and a modern market. OK, uh, separate product from traditional. Uh... Uh, Market segment. For market we, segment. We, we we try to market segment based on their uh, quality and their price, their ability to buy this product. Uh, uh, but uh, for 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 agrotourism, it it no matter how because uh, they they coming and they pick directly. So the customer they pick uh, uh, for their for their self to 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 choose another fruit in the farm so it 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 it's no problem for uh, tourism sector okay uh, okay thank you mr riza maybe uh, it was the last question uh, not, uh the last question that you answer but it's in the chat column is still one two three four uh many question uh, but we have limitation in time in discussion Okay, thank you for all the participants and uh, for thank you for all the, the participants for the question. And this is the end of the uh, session of discussion. Um, I would like to I would like to highlight some points from today's discussion uh, from the, the first uh, present presentation and the. From both from both presentation, okay. Agriculture is a huge business in in Indonesia, and uh, technology it should be uh, not a problem anymore because uh, we see that the IBM uh, was uh, developed uh, so many so many technology to support uh, to support the agriculture. Um, and from the second uh, from the Mr. Rizal presentation, uh, it was. Uh, a three clue, three clue for a good basic educational and empowering youth, and don't forget to collaborate, to collaborate with uh, another sector and with the government, with the supplier, with the third uh, party, and uh, okay, um, very well. This is the end of the of the of the session. Um, I would like to thank you to Mr. Panji Wasmana and also Mr. Rizal Fahreza. That was uh, very interesting and very uh, inspiring for us for F, uh, for our today's webinar. And also, I want to thank to everyone who participant uh, for attending today's webinar and for your active participation. Um, Maybe this is uh, the end. Uh, have a great day. Stay safe and keep healthy. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam. Okay, I will turn to Master of Ceremony, Mr. Faris, uh, for the next agenda. Okay. Thank you very much, Mrs. Anissa Kartinawati, as the moderator for this afternoon webinar. We also would like to kindly inform to all of the participants that material of today's lecture and link for e-certificates are available at the links that have been shared on the chat. Ladies and gentlemen, prestigious academic people, we have reached the end of the event.
Thank you very much for Rector of IPB University for the opening speech, Dean of College of Vocational Studies for the welcoming speech. And of course, thank you very much for the audiences for your participation and cooperations at today's webinar, Smart Agroindustry 4.0 in the Tropical Countries. High appreciation to the speakers, all of the participants from universities, other institutions, and companies from Indonesia and inter international partners, university. And we are really delighted to have you all today and really hope to see you all again on the next webinar series of SVIPB, College of, College of Vocational Studies, IPB University. Don't forget to follow and subscribe the SVIPB YouTube channel to be informed for the next webinar series. Once again, thank you very much as this event has been supported by the Directorate of Partnership and Alignment of Business and Industry Ministry of Education and Culture, Indonesia. Of course, big appreciation also to all of the committee for the hard work on behalf of steering committee. Me, Faris Amkurnia, when ask the Master of Ceremony, will close and end this afternoon webinar. Thank you. See you again next time in another opportunities. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.